اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین باری الخلائق اجمعین باعث الانبیاء والمرسلین والحمد للہ اللذی لا یبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه اللادون ولا يودي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا أجل ممدود فطر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالصخور ميدان أرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد صلی علی محمد و آلی محمد و علی آلی بیته الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین و لعنت اللہ علی اعدائه مجمعین من یوم عداوتهم الی یوم الدین اما بعد فقد قال اللہ عز و جل فی کتابه الحکیم و هو اصدق القائلین بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم شہر رمضان الذي انزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم ما صلي على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah, the most kind, the most merciful. It's due to that kindness and mercy that we have these opportunities where we gather in remembrance and glorification of Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. I pray that all of you are well, inshallah, that your health is well, and that your fast and the month of Ramadan is treating you well as well. We begin this sermon the way the commander of the faithful would begin many of his by advising us, Usikum ibadallah bi taqwallah. That I advise you, the servants of God, to be God-conscious, God-fearing, and pious human beings. Prior to the month of Ramadan, we had been in a journey of self-purification and the steps for it. We will pause here, inshallah, for the next four Fridays and then continue after if Allah gives us life. In this month of Ramadan, in these sermons, especially the first sermons, we will be looking at Dua Iftitah. Every year we do a different dua during this month just to give us a better understanding of what we recite. And I was looking at my notes and surprisingly we had never done dua iftitah, which is one of the main duas that we recite in this month. And so I felt that this is a dua that we will spend a little bit of time talking about so that when we recite it in the evenings, hopefully we can connect to this dua in a more holistic manner inshallah. This is one of my favorite du'as, to be quite honest. There is such beauty to it. There is such, um, and all the du'as from the Ahlul Bayt are beautiful. I'm not comparing. My personal inclination is that this du'a moves me tremendously. Um, this du'a, as we know, is taught to us by our 12th Imam, Al-Hujja Ajalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. <laughs> Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. And it is found in the books Misbah Al-Mutahajjid of Shaykh Al-Tusi, Iqbal Al-A'mal of Sayyid Ibn Ta'awuz, and Balad Al-Ameen of Kaf'ami. And then of course we find it later in Mafatih Al-Jinan, and it is there in all of our books of dua. The dua itself, when you read it, is broken up into three parts. The first part, which is the longest part, is the praise and glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will spend three weeks talking about the different ways in which this dua talks about the praise and glorification of God. And then we are taught the connection and the importance of sending salawat upon the Prophet and his family. And then the, and then the third section is especially to with our living Imam and our connection and our responsibilities to him. We'll try to get through as much as we can, but we're making a dent. That's all we're doing in these sermons. But inshallah, as I said, the hope is that it will inspire. 
The dua begins with praise. This is the iftitah that we talk about. Uh, we say in this dua, Allahumma inni aftatihu thana'a bihamdik. That, oh Allah, I begin. This iftitah is the beginning. So where this is the beginning of this dua. We're saying that, oh Allah, I begin this glorification, this thana by your hamd, by your praise. Yeah? Very beautiful. Just how it sounds. Yeah? You know, the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the most important etiquettes that we have when we communicate to God. You know, we sometimes have a very blunt relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, give me risk. Ya Allah, give me health. Ya Allah, give me this. But how many times do we have that mindset that first, Ya Allah, thank you for what you have already provided for me. Yeah? Thank you for the risk you have already provided for me. Thank you for the things that I can't even remember to thank you about, O oh Allah. Because we are drowning, literally drowning in the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our sixth Imam, alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam, ma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. He says, إِذَا طَلَبَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْحَاجَةَ فَلْيُثْنِي عَلَىٰ رَبِّهِ وَلْيَمْدَحْهُ He says that if any one of you wishes to ask something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they should first praise Him and then thank Him. Why? He says because when a person wants to ask something from somebody like a king, a malik, he says he prepares to say the best words to him first, doesn't he? You don't go to someone without blowing air in them as we say sometimes, you know. He says, but this king is a person who's limited. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much praise God deserves, how much glory God deserves. And so we come and we first and foremost Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And this is what this dua teaches us The whole first More than the first half of this dua If you read it It is all alhamdu, alhamdu, alhamdu Why? Because we are being taught The importance of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Now keep in mind, right? That, that God is not in need of this praise right? So it's not like we're being taught to do this Because that's the That's the The oil that will get this engine running No, Allah doesn't need our praise Right? Allah deals with our abruptness Allah deals with our bluntness Allah deals with all of these things And still provides Yet the purpose of this praise is for us Right? The more we praise The more it adds recognition That He truly is the one who is looking after me And when I have that recognition That it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Who is truly looking after me I understand then the relationship between an abd and a mawla and that becomes solidified through praising God yeah? when I praise someone I am admitting that I am in need of them am I not? of course it is an automatic assumption when we do that and so the more we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more we are admitting that we are this lowly servant who is extremely in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know when you look at the concept of praise it's really interesting in the Arabic language there are two words primarily that are referring to praise there are a lot of words like sana and shukr that have a different form of meaning but there are two words when you open the dictionary they will tell you they mean praise the first is madh yeah and the second is hamd right both of these words have the same letters yeah ha ma and da yeah um, but they are just differently placed but they are generally translated if you open handsware dictionary for example it will tell you they both mean a form of praise to somebody however when it comes to our theological understanding madh and hamd have two different meanings when it comes to praise madh is to praise something that unintentionally deserves praise follow me yeah madh is to praise something which unintentionally deserves praise. Like what? Like a flower. Yeah? We praise the flower, don't we? What a beautiful flower. But the flower didn't do anything to become beautiful, but yet it deserves praise. Yeah? Um, a sunset, a painting. These are things which unintentionally deserve praise, but they deserve praise. But it's not something that they did on their own. If we understand that, we as insan, deserve unintentional praise 
Because whatever we do comes from the nobility that is given to us by other than ourselves. It's given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even when we do something, we do madh of each other. Yeah? We praise each other, but it is not a hamd. Hamd is specific for the one who deserves intentional praise. Because internally they have the characteristics that display that they are worthy of reserving, of deserving praise. This is why, what do we say? We say, Alhamdu Lillah Rabbil Alameen. Understand that all praise is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Yeah? So next time we praise God, it is important that we understand this, right? That I praise you because you deserve praise, O oh Allah. Everything I have is from you, O oh Allah. Let's not be ungrateful servants in this month of Ramadan. Yeah? This is what this dua teaches us. Man, everything we have. I, Allah challenges us in the Quran, right? That start enumerating what I give you. You can't do it, Allah says. You can't do it. And we can't do it, right? We, can't, we will run out of things before we even finish thanking Allah for what He does. And this is what we say in this dua. This dua teaches us that everything that we have, all my problems are solved because of you, O oh Allah. What do we say? He say? We say, فَكَمْ يَا إِلَٰهِ مِن قُرْبَةٍ that oh Allah, how much of trouble you have removed from me. And my hum, my sadness you have dispelled. And my misery you have taken away. And how much mercy you have spread upon us. And the, and the ties of difficulty you have cut, O oh Allah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, all of these things that Allah has done. You know, sometimes we take for granted the, the, the difficulties Allah takes us out of. How many times have we been in despair? We all have been in despair. And we think that there is no solution for me. And give it some time. And Allah solves our problems for us, doesn't He? He does. He always does. Because that's who God is. That's how beautiful God is. And not only is God that beautiful, right? That He Himself deserves praise. But that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also shares this beauty with us so that we can receive perfection as well. Everything that we have, every jamal that we have, every kamal that we have comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is because He does not keep things to Himself. He shares it with His creation. And for that we praise Him as well. What do we say? Alhamdulillahi fashi fil khalki amru wa hamduhu al-zahiri bil karami majdu al-basiti bil judi yada. Subhanallah. He says that how beautiful all praises to you Allah whose commandments and praise are found in all of His creation. Yani when we do something good, we are getting praise but true praise belongs to... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man, God is beautiful, I tell you. God is beautiful. Find this beauty. Read this dua. Read it with translation. Read it with a heart. And learn to enjoy praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Consider this a dhikr that you should do. Alhamdulillah. Alham constantly. Yeah? Especially as we understand how beautiful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صدق الله العلي العظيم محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين سريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين 
اللهم صل على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين محمد ما صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على سيد الوصيين مير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وما صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على سبت الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة <تصفيق> على محمد وآل محمد وصل على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي ما صل على محمد وآل محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وتابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير صل على محمد وآل محمد In these second sermons, again, we're in a special time. Inshallah, what we're going to do is try to focus on different aspects of this month to maximize. Obviously, if something important comes about, we'll discuss it, inshallah. Uh, but I feel that this is the most current event that is taking place. And it's the beauty of this month. And it's our responsibility to try and maximize it, right? So that we can grasp the most from it. Today, I want to, inshallah, discuss the Holy Quran. This is a month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals um, the Holy or revealed the Holy Quran in the month of Ramadan, um, Shahru Ramadan, Alladhi Unzila Fihil Quran. That is the month of Ramadan in which He revealed it, you know, and we are blessed to have this guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there are two types of guidance that God provides. There is Hidayatul Taqween, Hidayatul Taqwini and Hidayatul Tashri'i, right? The Taqwini guidance is intuitive guidance, where mankind has the ability, for the most part, to be able to decipher between good and bad, right? We know stealing is bad, we know cheating is bad, we know killing is bad, we don't need Allah to tell us these things are bad. Intuitively, we know it. However, the intuitive nature can get corrupted very easily when there are enough temptations on the other side for a person to do what they know is wrong. How many times have we known something is wrong but we did it because the reward on the other end was too great, for example, right? And so Allah sends a second form of guidance. And again, He didn't have to do this, but He did. And this second form of guidance gives us more accountability. To say that if you don't then follow your guidance, this is what will happen to you. And so the whole discussion of the Day of Judgment comes about. The Qur'an gives us that, in, that tashri'i legislative guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no doubt we read a lot of Qur'an in this month. But we also should feel a bit guilty that we don't use this Qur'an as much in the rest of the year. We should have a bit of guilt in that time as well. And what we have to try and do, and I feel that this is important, is that, look, like I said, I, I have husnul dhan that we all read a tremendous amount of Qur'an. Now, we all have different capacities. Some may finish the Qur'an multiple times. Some may finish it once. Some may finish half, whatever it is. But engage in the reading of Qur'an. There is tremendous benefit, right? Encourage yourself, <coughs> push yourself to read some of the Holy Qur'an in this month. If you can read it with translation and understanding, better, yeah, better. But even the recitation of the verses has tremendous significance. However, the aim of this recitation really is that we should be able to then carry this momentum for the rest of the year, until the next Ramadan, where the Qur'an does not go back on our shelves, where the Qur'an does not bring something that we only do during istikharas or when we go on vacation, we walk under the Qur'an. You know, sometimes 
funny the things we do with the Quran, you know, like we mean the best, but the fact that we ignore it all the other times, we should feel guilty about that. And so I think that one of the ways that we have to approach the Quran and the reading of the Quran is to realize that this, this is the month that is a training ground. You know, sometimes we, we look at the month of Ramadan as the finish line. That, you know, like, I do all of this and then I receive a, a reward. But it's not like that, right? The month of Ramadan is actually a training ground. Um, we get accustomed to hunger. We get accustomed to generosity. We get accustomed to ibadat in this month. The aim is then not to just close it and say, okay, khalas, I'm done until next Ramadan. The aim is to then use these lessons for the rest of the year, right? And so we have to have that mentality that, okay, I am reading two pages a day. Man, if you can read two pages a day, if you've not been reading, barakallah, yeah? The barakallah hufiq. Because that is a blessing, right? Two pages a day. Some people may have very busy schedules. Try and read at least two pages a day, but read it with the understanding that I want this to carry on, ya Allah. This is important to me, that I want this to carry on. You know, part of, it's, it's important to have this understanding of the value of the Qur'an. You know, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad, he says, alaykum bil Qur'an. He says that, I, like, I adhere to the Qur'an. Alaykum is like, he's saying like, do it, yeah? Read the Qur'an. Alaykum bil Qur'an, adhere to the Qur'an. فَاتَّخِذُوهُ إِمَامًا وَقَائِدًا And take it as your leader and as your imam, right? As your imam and as your leader, somebody you follow. You know, like the relationship that we have to have with the Qur'an is to understand that we're not just reading the Qur'an, but we're trying to learn from the Qur'an. We're trying to maximize our, the benefits of the Qur'an. Remember, imagine like God says in the Qur'an that He has provided all forms of knowledge in the Qur'an. Imagine that, right? Yet, like, we're jahil sometimes. Like, wait a minute, what's happening? Right? Why? Because we don't read the Qur'an as if we would read, for example, an encyclopedia or a cookbook or Wikipedia. You know, we, we read these things, why? To gain benefit from it, right? So that we can do something with it. The Qur'an needs to be read in that way. The Qur'an needs to be read in that manner that this book is going to actually make my life better, right? And it will answer my questions for me. I promise you, if you become familiar with the Qur'an, if you become connected to the Qur'an, and to do that, I'm not telling you to read like sections a day. I'm telling you, start with two pages a day, with understanding. It will answer your questions. You know, and I'll give this example to you. Last night, you know, I had this, this thoughts, you know, when you, when you can't sleep, the thoughts come into your head. And so I have many thoughts sometimes, you know. Um, and I was, the mind was wandering and I was saying that, my God, what if my car breaks down? Now my car is fine, alhamdulillah, right? But these thoughts come at night sometimes, right? So I said, what if my car breaks down and I need to replace the radiator and I need to replace... I was like, ya Allah, what's all this trouble? And there's no trouble, alhamdulillah. Yeah? But I've created trouble in my mind. And I said, Ya Allah, what's all this trouble? Yeah? Might as well send the 12th Imam, let's end this trouble, let's go to Jannah, Ya Allah. Yeah? I am ready. I am ready for this world to come to an end. I am, right? Because I don't want to go through my radiator breaking down, my fan breaking down. Now I got to go to the shop and, oh, I don't need the drama. Yeah? I don't need that. I'll end the world, let's go to Jannah. That's my idea. Yeah? And that's how I went to sleep. That what, why all these problems? And then I woke up, and you know, in the month of Ramadan, people forward some very useful things. And somebody forwarded me this ayah, and it answered my question for me. I kid you not. Yeah? Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 6, and this was the exact thing that came to me after I had this exact thought. It said, مَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيَجْعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ حَرَجْ He said that Allah does not intend to give you difficulty. Yeah? He does not intend to make your life difficult. But He gives you these things to purify you, Allah says. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Yeah? That's what I'm saying. The Quran does that for you. You have thoughts, the Quran will answer them for you. You have ideas, the Quran will answer them for you. This is why God says that this book will be your guide. Follow it. 
But we have to make that commitment to this book. Amir, I'll end with this hadith. It's very beautiful. Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. You know, when you feel signs like this from God, it's, it's beautiful, yeah? It's beautiful. And I'm not, this is not reserved for people who wear clothes like this, yeah? All of us can find these signs. The Imam says in this tradition, Fil Quran, Naba'u ma qablakum, wa khabaru ma ba'dakum, wa hukmu ma baynakum. Subhanallah. Everything. Yeah? The, the Imam says that the Quran has information about that which came before you. And it has news about that which will come after you. And it has the rulings of what you need now. Everything. Yeah? Everything is there in this Quran. We just have to align ourselves to it. So inshallah, in this month, align it. Force it. Force it. Force it. If you can't do two pages a day, do a page a day. Yeah? But do not leave this book. As Allah says in the Quran, that on the day of judgment, the Quran will complain. That this community abandoned me, Allah. Let us not be the people that the Quran complains about. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ